Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. <laughs> and He is good all of the time. His faithfulness and His mercy, it endures forever. This is the God who is with us and to us and through us. And wants us all for Himself. He doesn't want to share us with the world. He doesn't want to share you with the devil. and He doesn't want to share you with yourself, with your flesh, your mind, will, and emotions. He wants us to be more than conquerors. He doesn't want us to be enslaved by our feelings and by the thoughts of our mind, by our that, that will that I do it myself drive. I can handle this, you know, drive, that, that will, that, that power within you that causes you to do or to not do the things that you want to do. See, he wants us to rely on his wisdom and his strength. He wants to wash us and cleanse us from, from just relying on our own ability to get it done. You see, God, who created the, the, the heaven and the earth, Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you see, because he is the one that created all things, he knows that the only way that we can truly be sustained is in if we're in him. See, if we're in him, we have this knowledge that never ends, that just wisdom that's always supplied. It's just a, a connection you have that is absolutely clean and pure and holy and he gives you strength in the inner man and in your uh, how can you explain it <laughs> when we rely on ourselves we get tired we can collapse because we've had too much too much but when we rely on the Lord we have the, the strength of God and the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God is inexhaustible you cannot exhaust God he never gets tired he never gets weary does that mean that while we're in this physical body we won't get tired and have to go to bed no but it means weary in your mind will and emotions weary in this in your body in your physical senses physical senses <laughs> You can't see them, but you feel them. And these these senses that are unseen, you could actually say that they were spiritual, couldn't you? Because you can't see them. You only feel them. Even with our mind, will, and emotions, as these thoughts and thoughts and desires go through us, we feel them in the physical body. And we go toward them to try to do or to not do what it is that would be good to do or we assume to be good to do maybe that's not the right word for that but anyway we get weary and the only way to not get weary the only way to not get tied down in this thought life that doesn't lead to true life because true life is in the knowledge of God. Open your, open your eyes to see. This is what I would tell you right now. God is greater than all. Elohim, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is greater than everything that He has created. Whether seen or unseen, God is greater than all things. He rules over all flesh. And it's a good thing to come to him today and lay down your heart, your mind, will, and emotions so that he can fill that space in your heart. When God fills the space of your heart, you, you don't get lonely. You know, well, it's not good for any person to be alone for too long a time. But I mean, in your, you can have thoughts. You can be by yourself, but in your heart, you know that you're not alone. God 
has good things to say to you, thoughts that lead to life, life and peace, life and life more abundantly. I was thinking as I was before I, I, I started this file up that the Holy Spirit, I've never known him to speak evil to me. I've never known him to try to deceive me or hurt me. He doesn't try to hurt me in any way. He's always trying to bring me into rest, trusting God. He provides me with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He gives me spiritual understanding. He opens my eyes to see things. He gives us, did I say, I probably said it already, an understanding. And even as I got on my knees this morning, to worship Him, to thank Him for who He is, and to thank Him for giving us salvation, for giving me salvation, for putting my name in His book and making me alive. As I got on my knees to thank Him, I, I heard, thank you for making me see. I can see. You can read that in Ephesians, I believe it is, chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, he gives us spiritual understanding. He opens our eyes to see in the Spirit by his Spirit. His Spirit gives life to us. He gives us the true reality through the eyes of God. Our Father, which art in heaven. I mean, when we really understand our Father, which art in heaven, our heart has rest. He restores the soul. It's that continual coming again that opens us up to into the knowledge and, and, and into the wisdom, into the understanding. This human flesh is a barrier for us. It's like a wall and we can't get around it. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This one who has come to restore the soul, to wash it and to cleanse it from its filthiness, the filthiness of this world, the lies and the deceits from the kingdom of darkness, from the enemy of our soul. He put us in a place where we can come out of that darkness and enter into light. Where and when we enter into the light is let me tell you about light. The light that I'm talking about is the knowledge of who he is. But when we're led by the Spirit to, into the knowledge of who God is, not just reading a, a book, when we're led by the Spirit into the knowledge of who God is, our heart is relieved and the weight of this world is gone. Uh, the dependence that we have to in our heart, in our flesh, in our mind, will, and emotions, it's gone. And our dependency isn't one the one who truly loves us. Jesus has really brought us into a great place. The Lord Jesus Christ has really brought us into a place of abundance, of peace, of rest, where we don't have to do it ourselves. We're not alone. Christ is in us glorifying, being glorified. And it's all because we come to the water and drink. We call upon the name of the Lord. We're not seeking for our for our own will to be done. We understand that the will God's will is the best will. That He created the world and everything that there is in it. And we belong, the whole world, whether they choose Christ or not, whether they come into the kingdom or no. They belong to God. And he already drew the line in the sand and said, Choose this day whom you will serve. Will you honor yourself and try to be, be the Most High God? Will you try to be me on your own? Will you submit yourself to me? Will you submit yourself to me? Come and let me be the teacher. Let me be the one to rule your heart and mind. Let me be the one to keep you in perfect peace and to clear your mind and give you confidence, give you rest for your soul. 
And you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus is the one who was given the power to lay his life down and pick it up again. Jesus is the one in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. And he, he lifted Jesus into the heavens where he was seen no more until his coming again. And this is the same Spirit, same Spirit that was in Christ Jesus, that is, that's in us. The same Spirit that's, that was in Christ, that raised him from the dead, that moved him up to the heavens, to be seated next to the Father's right hand side, where he makes intercession, prays for us, is the Counselor that would be in us if we would submit ourselves to him. When God, is, when God, our Father, the Father of heaven and earth, is our confidence, we really can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And all it is is humbling ourselves to the Almighty God, saying, all right, I surrender. I surrender every bit of me. I can't handle this anymore, but I know that you can. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the ending. You are the living God. You created the world and everything that is in it. And you have sent us your son. Your son has brought us salvation. And I receive that salvation in the name of your son, Yeshua, Jesus. Who the son sets free is free indeed, you know. If we follow him, if we desire him, and the freedom that, that, that Jesus has brought us, I'm telling you right now, with we are free indeed, truly in our heart. We have let go of this world and the situations and circumstances. And let me say it for you. We've let go of this world. We've let go of our flesh and we've let go of the devil. And we've fallen into the arms of the everlasting God who is able to counsel us and hold us, comfort us, and, and, and lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Because you, you turned it around and you made your life all about him. And now whatever darkness we face, whatever evil is before us, whatever thing is trying to bewilder us, bewilder us and hold us in the dark, you have the spirit of truth speaking the will of God. And the Father's will, the will of God, what is it in Jeremiah 29 and 11? I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to bring you to a successful end. God has success in mind for his people. All those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. We call on that name, the name above every name. Jesus comes in and he takes the weight away. He takes the burden away. One thing we have to remember is always remember Jesus Christ and what he went through being born into this world. What he went through it, it, during his, his walk showing us the kingdom. Jesus said, repent, change your mind. The kingdom of God is at hand. And he walks through this being insulted and berated. Look at what he endured on the cross, despising the shame. But he got a victory that no man could get. See, because we bowed our knees to sin. We were born in sin. But Jesus has resisted sin since the day of his inception coming into this world. Jesus denied sin. He said, no, I won't bow to you, devil. I won't listen to you flesh. And he never once turned his back on the Father of heaven and earth. He is the only one who is holy enough, the only one who can stand before the living God. He's the one who got the victory for us. And now, because of what he did, how he kept the faith, he passes that to us. He has allowed, he has made it so that we can come boldly into the kingdom of God, boldly into the throne room of grace and find help in our time of need. Now we can ask the Lord for whatever we need and he will give it to us. This is the grace, this is the mercy of God. 
and don't ask him for evil we overcome evil with good he will teach us good things like I said spirit doesn't tell me to do evil stuff he only reminds me of good things he keeps my mind on good things all things are possible with God he will not leave us he will not forsake us he'll strengthen us in the inner man and he gives us life and he gives us peace He's destroyed the works of the devil. That's what Jesus said he came to do, to destroy the works of the enemy. The enemy brings fear. He brings torment. He brings darkness, chaos, confusion. In every evil way, is he used? Yes, he's used, but draw near to God. That's a whole other subject, but <laughs> draw near to the Lord. Submit yourself to him, and he gives us the strength to resist every evil thing. Does it mean that bad things are going to stop happening around the world? No. Does it mean that bad things are going to stop happening to you? Yes and no. When we learn of him, we don't receive the evil reports so easily. We don't receive the enemy's words in our heart and our mind we know how to reject those words remember their words remember those feelings and the pains and the aches they're not always something that's actually going on in your body but sometimes it's just something to make you take what the devil wants to give you you ever notice you get a pain and then you get a name <laughs> you get a word for what that might be the Lord does not give us a spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind a mind a clear mind the mind of Jesus Christ the mind of Jesus Christ raised the dead the mind of I'm not saying that his mind did it but putting on the, the thinking the way that he thinks thinking the way that Jesus thinks we put on this mind, or it says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Look it up. Meditate on it. Read it. Find out what he's saying. Put on Christ and make no provision for your physical, for the mental and emotional, and the, what is it, the mind, will, and emotions, and soul. Make no provision for it that, it that it would lead you into the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. I do it myself. And the lust of the eye. The greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If we truly, I mean, this the success that we want, God knows how to get us there. He's the strength of our lives and nothing else we can't be the strength of our life nobody else can be the strength of our life it has to be him he has to be our all in all he's more than enough we can't exhaust his wisdom he never sleeps he never slumbers he's always there he gives us confidence he gives us strength he gives us endurance and whatever we need, we ask, He will do. It's written. We just have to make sure that we're asking in a humble heart, with a humble heart, with a with a with a, a heart of praise, with a with a mouth <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I think that we ask for things that we don't need. The things that would hurt somebody else, things that would be harm and bring it danger. But the Lord knows the thoughts and the what is it we call it? What do we what do we call it now? The thoughts and the intentions of our heart, and that's what He sees right there. Read one scripture before I go. Lamentations chapter 3. I love this particular verse. It's got me through 
a lot. It says in, in verse, I said, chapter 3, verse starting in 19, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, remembering all of this pain, this agony, this terrible thing that has happened to me, knowing all of my past and not, not certain of my future. My soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled, humbled within me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. See, God is good, and his mercy endures forever. He loves us with an agape love, an unconditional love, and he has promised to keep our hearts and minds. He will not let evil overtake us. He will not let us be consumed, and this is what I love about him. The reason, I mean, I've been through so much, I cannot even explain it all, and it's not even worth it to me to go back through it. But it comes back to my mind, the evil that has been done to me and the things that I have done. And it tries to harass, but the Lord, He is there. He's there, He's right here with me. And I remember him and I remember that he will not allow me to be consumed by evil not consumed with evil by evil nor will he let any evil thought dwell in my mind because he's always going to remind me of truth reality the truth what it what life really is remember this God is Jesus is alive God is. That's the first thing about faith. We always need to remember that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because those who come to Him, they know that God is. And He rewards those who come after Him who diligently, every day, keep on getting up, keep on coming. And He will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll be blessed, blessed people of God and, and praise his name because he's good. His mercy really does endure forever. I read uh, Lamentations chapter 3, 19 through 26. Have a great day. Bye-bye.